Bless it. It's one of my favorite Sundays of the year, and, and oh, a couple of months ago, Holton and I were sitting in the office, I think it was right before we went to junior high camp, and, and I said, Hunter, what, or Hunter, Holton, what are we going to talk about? What's going to be our theme for the back to school blessing? And he said, here's what I want. I want a keychain with a guy picking his nose. And I want the theme to be pick wisely. <laughs> guy picking his nose. Pick wisely. I'm sure somebody's going to be upset that we're picking noses, but we clapped in church this morning, so we'll be okay. Uh, pick wisely was what uh, what we settled on, um, and the reason or the the thought behind it is one of the most frustrating things that we've seen as we work with young people, uh, as we work with young adults, even is that is that they start out so strong as they follow Jesus, and we've seen them give their life to Christ, and they've they've prayed in the altar at camp or here at church, and and. And they get back into their home life and they start running around with the same old friends they always ran around with before. And it's just a matter of time, it seems like, before before our young people who have this great spiritual high, they, they get back down and and they just kind of fall apart and lose it. And they'll come back to camp and and they'll reclaim what they had before and they go back home and they stay with the same people. And it's, it's so frustrating to see young people with so much potential and so much talent and, and so much life kind of just throw it all away. And, and the solution is so easy. And probably for us as adults, we think it's easy. For kids, it's, it's not easy at all. It's difficult. But, but to, to surround yourself with the people who are like-minded, with, with other believers who are going to pick you up instead of those who are going to suck you down and keep you in the muck in the mire. And, and so we wanted to talk about, about picking wisely the people that you fill your life with. Uh, I just want to begin. This doesn't give you permission to go to school and be mean to people who don't follow Jesus. All right? Be kind to everybody, no matter what. But pick your friends wisely because it matters. Why does it matter? Here's what statistics, here's what the numbers say. You will become like the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that for a minute. Now think about, and for you kids, do it, but, but some of you adults, you might do this too. Think about the five people you spend the most time with. Maybe it's your family. Maybe that, that must be why I throw my dirty clothes on the floor, because I hang out with Bailey. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but I, think about your five closest friends that you spend the most time with, and then ask yourself, do I really want to be like them when I'm grown up, when I become an adult? Do I want to be like them even now? The, the Bible talks about this so much. The first verse I want to share, Proverbs 13, 20 says, Become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools. Watch your life fall to pieces. Anybody ever experienced that firsthand? Come on, we, it's okay to admit it. You don't start out knowing everything and then just forget it as you go. You start out knowing nothing, then you learn, and then you forget it again. But, but if you hang out with a bunch of dummies, you're going to be a dummy. Not, not only that, but, but what it says is, is if you hang out with dummies, your life's going to fall apart. I, I can say my testimony, my story is... I hung out with a bunch of dummies and my life fell apart. Thank God I was given another chance and another chance and another chance. Thank God for the people He blessed my life with. Choose friends who are, who are wise. Who are, who are, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Don't hang out with dummies. Kids, you got me? Now, I can't help it if your brother or your sister is a dummy. You still have to hang out with them. Second verse, 
Friends come and go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. How many of you had a friend who's just walked out? What, me and Rosemary? Okay, me and Rosemary. A friend that, that was there and, oh, I'm going to be there for you and I'm going to help. I, we're, and we're there for them when everything falls apart in their life. But when things go south in our life, they're nowhere to be found. Pick friends who are committed to you. Because I can't say this anymore plainly, clearly, or straightforwardly. Pick friends who are committed to you as a person. Not to what you can get them or what you can give to them or what associating with you will provide for them. Pick friends who are committed to who you are as a person. You'll see your life not go to pieces as quickly. Fourth verse. Don't hang out with angry people. Don't keep company with hotheads. Bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected. I think kids need to hear this message almost above everything else. We live in such an angry world. We live in such an angry culture. We live in such an angry time. And, 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 and if you don't agree on something, you're instant enemies. And, and sometimes we get to where we fly off the handle. Lord knows I'm pretty talented at that too sometimes. Pick people who don't fly off the handle or who aren't hotheads. I like that one. Pick people who aren't hotheads. Pick people who, 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 who are peaceful. I, I mean, what did Jesus say? Blessed are the peacemakers? Be peaceful. Not fighters. Anyhow, going quick because we got a lot to do this morning. Then finally, bad company ruins good manners. I don't know how many times I've shared this with kids at camp. Here's the bottom line, guys. Pick friends who are going to follow Jesus Christ with you. You pick somebody who's not interested in Jesus and I guarantee they will spend their time pulling you away from Him. Bad company ruins good manners. I don't know that manners is necessary. Bad company ruins everything. That's the truth. Surround yourself with bad people and your life's going to go south. Surround yourself with good people and it still may go south, but at least you have somebody to help pick you up when it falls apart. Favorite quote, as I've worked all week to get ready for this, Booker T. Washington, great African-American educator. He says, associate yourself with people of good quality, for it is far better to be alone than in bad company. It's okay to be alone. If your only other option is losers, be alone. Be alone. It's okay to be alone. Especially when that's the best option available. Uh, So today, uh, I just want to encourage you to do, for all of our young people, maybe even for our adults, is that we are people who will pick wisely those who are going to influence our lives. Our thoughts... Uh, our decisions, we will become like the people that we allow into our lives. And some of us have allowed the wrong kind of people to have the wrong kind of influence over us. So again, I say, pick wisely. Now the important part of the service this morning is what we're about to do now. And uh, I, I didn't prepare anybody ahead of time really for this except for Michael and for Cindy. Uh, But we're going to have a time of prayer. And what I'd like for us to do first is we have a lot of of teachers and faculty and staff from our schools. We have a lot of board members, I think, even from our schools. If you are uh, anything with a school, as an adult, could we get you to come up here towards the altar? Not students. We don't want students yet. Um, just anywhere right here around the front of the altar steps. And I've got Michael who's going to pray, but here's what I want to ask. If, if I could get our kids this morning. Kids, would you all come gather around these educators and, and workers at your school? Would you guys all come up here? If you're a kid, come on up. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make a big circle around them. (laughs) 
Can you guys maybe scrunch together just a little bit? Okay, if you're a kid, let's, uh, let's make a big circle around them. Let's all hold hands. Make a big circle. You can come up on the stage. That's not much of a... There we go. There we go. Now we're getting a circle. And we're going to have one of our former administrators uh, who knows what these teachers and staff need as far as prayers go. Uh, we're going to have him lead our, our prayer for our teachers. Would the rest of you just raise a hand in the air and join us as we pray over these who are going to be watching our kids. Mr. Simpson. Thank you. First of all, I want to say when we, when we pray, we're to talk to God and to listen. And my prayer is kind of going to be talking to, to you as it's just going to be a little different today. And I want uh, to consider this a conversation, this prayer. Uh, I'm especially happy to have college students here today, the volleyball players. You don't know how important you are to our community. Uh, you, people look up to you and you don't know that. The life you live, people see you. These students may come to some of your volleyball games they look up to you, and we want you to uh, show them what good hard work can do and be a good example for them. And all of you out here are teachers, and all of you out here are students in some way. Uh, and we just appreciate all of you. Teachers are some of my favorite people. Worked with them all my life, and I've been a teacher all my life. So let's pray. Dear Father, we're just so thankful for this large group of people that's here today, for the students, the staff of the schools, uh, for all the positions that these people have in schools. We want to thank you, Lord, for the here and the now. We want to pray, Father, that as these teachers look and around their classroom they will see have insights into to what these children need they will not only see their now but they're they're looking they will have uh, an understanding lord of what each child needs they will um there will be times that they don't know what to do, but just remember to say, Jesus, and you'll have comfort, and you'll have um, peace. The impact you have on these children is great. Uh, there will be times they'll come back to you and say, thank you for the hug. Thank you for what you did for me. Thank you. Sometimes they even say thank you for what you did to me. But we just praise you, Lord, for these people that give their lives to um, help educate our young people. And, Lord, just, we thank you that we have a pastor that teaches us and help us to always be listening to the words he has for us. We just want now, Lord, want to say thank you. Thank you for your guidance. Help us to always look forward and look for to you, Lord, you, Lord, for our, the help we need as we help other people. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, wait, 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 wait. Don't anybody go anywhere. This will be easy. If all the teachers can just kind of slide out of the way. I'm going to ask all the students to come and just take a knee right here at the altar. You guys are young enough, you can still do that. And I'm going to ask if any of the adults want to come and gather around them, put a hand on a shoulder, uh, that sort of thing. Everybody just take a knee up here, guys. Take a knee. You know how to do that.
Any adults that want to come pray over their students or students? And again, I'll just ask the rest of you to raise a hand in our general direction as a declaration that we're seeking God's power to come into this moment. And I'm going to invite Miss Cindy to come up here and lead us in a prayer for our students. And this may have been said already as well because I was in the nursery, but remember not to just let this day be our day of prayer. Our our new administrator at school said in a staff meeting this week, you know, and we had told him we had prayed before they decided on him. And he said, don't stop praying just because I'm here now. So I'm reminding you of that, to not stop praying. And, and also to remember kids, because I had someone tell me this this week too, that they prayed over my backpack last year and it didn't help. I had a bad year. <laughs> well, you've got to do your part too, okay? This prayer today is not going to make you have a great year. You've got to do your part, all right? Okay. Lord, we come to you blessed and thankful as a church for these young people in our church. We pray that you bless them daily to find the joy in learning. Open their minds to receive knowledge and give great effort at, in their education. Protect them all as they come and go to school. We pray that these young people and educators in our church shine in a way that those around them know that you are a part of their lives. I also pray that these young people have the knowledge to see the needs in others around them. Not every child has the love at home that they need. Lord, and help us to give them that love they need it at school and help our students to love them as well. Give guidance to all as, who have chosen to serve you. Give them love and patience and respect as our student, students begin learning. These students learn from the first hello from their bus driver through the kindness of our janitors and lunch ladies, the helpfulness of our secretaries and administrators, and the guidance of our school board. Please, Lord, bless every child here, every young adult here, every family that's represented, and every school that's represented. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay.